In advance of Acting Secret Service Director Ronald Rose's testimony this week before the Senate Judiciary Committee, RealClearPolitics.com's Susan Crabtree reported on a whistleblower email a Secret Service counter sniper sent to the entire uniform division calling for accountability at the supervisory level for the agency's July 13th failure to protect Trump and his rally attendees, saying among other things, and I'm quoting the email, sadly, we have fallen short for years. We just look good doing it. I have conveyed these thoughts, not only to supervisors, but to those responsible for training us, only to be brushed off as those with less experience somehow knew more than me. This anonymous countersniper went on to conclude, quoting again, the motto of the United States Secret Service, CYA, and every supervisor is doing it right now. That email turned out to be quite prescient, given the subsequent testimony of Acting Director Rowe. One particular exchange must be shared in a bit of an extended format in order to fully appreciate how the permanent government operates to obfuscate, stonewall, and end run accountability. Here, Missouri Senator Josh Hawley interrogates Director Rowe over the decision makers and the decisions they made on July 13th. To echo the counter sniper's email and paraphrase the permanent government's 2020 agitprop, Rose's testimony has all the classic earmarks of a cover your ass operation. Watch. Well, let me ask you this, who was the lead site agent who made the decision to leave the AGR building completely outside of the security perimeter. Who was that? Senator, I cannot give you that name. This person is operational. They're still doing investigations. They're still doing protective visits. Have they been relieved of duty? Senator, uh, they have not been relieved name, of duty. I know their name, by the way. Why have they not been relieved of duty? They are still cooperating, not only being interviewed by the FBI, but also by our Office of Professional Responsibility. And uh, we will let the facts of uh, the mission assurance and any further investigations play out. Is it, isn't the fact that a former president was shot, that a good American is dead, that other Americans were critically wounded, isn't that enough mission failure for you to say that the person who decided that that building should not be in the security perimeter probably ought to be stepped down? Senator, I think you're using the word decided, and I think we need to allow the, the investigation play out. Who did make the decision then? If it wasn't the lead uh, site agent who made the decision not to put that in the security perimeter? Senator, you're zeroing in on one particular agent. I want to find out exactly yeah. what was the entire decision process. So I think yeah. I want to be neutral and make sure that we get to the bottom of it and interview everybody in order to determine if there was more than one person who perhaps exercised bad judgment. Well, sure. My question is, why don't you relieve everybody of duty who made bad judgment? So, yeah, you're right. I am zeroing in on somebody. I'm trying to find somebody who's accountable here. And we so will. you're telling me that the person who made the decision not to include this in the perimeter has not been relieved of duty. What about the person who is in charge of the interoperability of radio frequencies between local law enforcement and, and Secret Service? Has that person been relieved of duty? Uh, no, Senator, because interoperability is a challenge, uh, is a greater challenge than just one person. On that day, we had a counterpart system uh, it failed As the person who decided, who made the decision to send Donald Trump onto stage knowing that you had a security situation, has that person been relieved of duty? No, sir, they haven't. Because... As the person who decided not to pull the former president off of stage when you knew that, in your words, the locals were working a serious security situation, has that person been relieved of duty? Uh, no, sir. Again, I refer you back to my original answer that we are investigating this through a mission assurance and as opposed to zeroing in on one, what more do you need to investigate to know? Exactly what the what decision making process was. What more do you need to investigate was? to know that there were critical enough failures that some individuals ought to be held accountable? I mean, what more do you need to know? What I need to know is exactly what happened, and I need my investigators to do their job. And I cannot. A lot of people didn't do I their cannot jobs. put my thumb on the scale. Otherwise, what do you mean? Put your thumb the on the objective. Scale? The obje You're asking me, Senator, to completely make a rush to judgment about somebody failing. I acknowledge this was a failure of the Is Secret it not Service. prima facie that somebody has failed? A former president was sir, shot. Sir, this could have been our Texas School Book Depository. I have lost sleep over that for the last 17 days, then just like you have. somebody to and hold I will tell them you, accountable. Senator, I will tell you, Senator, that I will not rush to judgment, that people will be held accountable, and I will do so with integrity and not rush to judgment and put people I can't unfairly believe that you persecuted. Are, I, unfairly persecuted? Unfairly, got people sir, who are we dead. have to be able to have a proper investigation into this, Senator.
No one is individually responsible because everyone is collectively responsible. The agency did it. It's accountability theater. Pinning the whole thing as an agency failure protects all of the individual shot callers because the former director was already offered up as the sacrificial lamb. Yes, the lead site agent had responsibility for the sloped roof from which the assassin fired, but let's not rush to judgment. Yes, an agent had the responsibility to ensure the inner operability of the communication systems between Secret Service and local law enforcement. Rather than interoperable, the comms were inoperable, but let's not rush to judgment. Yes, Secret Service was alerted to a security issue of an individual with a rage finder and decided not to pull Trump off stage, but, say it with me, let's not rush to judgment. Yes, local law enforcement offered the use of drones as part of the security coverage for that day. Secret Service didn't take them up on it, and Acting Director Rose said the agency probably should have, but let's not rush to judgment. To even suggest anyone lose their job is to persecute the good men and women of the Secret Service, and Acting Director Rowe won't have it. You see, the sentinels of the permanent government really dig in when it comes to protecting their posts. They are significantly less zealous when it comes to protecting the people or their president. Nearly three weeks after Trump was almost assassinated, we now know the following. Number one, Trump was shot. Number two, the Secret Service failed. In other words, we know no more than we did on July 13th. The Secret Service is part of the Department of Homeland Security, just as the FBI is part of the Department of Justice. When we have a Republican president, they're in. When we have a Democrat president, they're in. They're always in. With the awesome police power at their disposal and the job security of a Chicago public school teacher, these agencies have outsized influence on the DC political culture. So when they don't move with alacrity to gather evidence to establish a credible official story and present that case, including the supporting evidence for public scrutiny, they destabilize our constitutional republic more so than can any politician's rhetoric or even assassin's bullet. I'm Dan Proft with a Counterculture Commentary. Please like this video and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And please leave a comment in the comment section. We'd love to hear your thoughts.